In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to do to install an internal hard drive into your Fat Model PlayStation 2 and start playing your games right off your internal hard drive. And it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here. To level up your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content, do that by subscribing. Let's get your PlayStation 2 Fat Model set up with an internal hard drive. As great as it would be to grab any old hard drive out of your storage drawer and throw it in your PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 2 is, as my father would have said, kind of fickle. It only works with specific makes and models of SATA-based hard drives, and the PlayStation 2 hard drive compatibility chart is where you want to look to find out which ones work and which ones don't. One of my favorites on the list is the Western Digital WD-10EZEX. It's a one terabyte hard drive, three and a half inch, so it fits the PlayStation 2 correctly, 7200 RPM, and as the guide lists right here, it works with the standard SATA to PS2 adapter, works great, and has plenty of space for your games. And at $40 US, it's cheaper than it's ever been. I've got this link for you in the description below if you need one for your PlayStation 2. You need a way to connect that drive to your PC in order to transfer files and games over to it. I've been using this USB 3.0 to SATA dock for about a year and a half now and it's been completely reliable and fantastic. I've got it linked for you in the description if you need one. You have to have a way to connect your hard drive to your PlayStation 2 and it's one of these SATA to PS2 adapters. I've been using this one for about a year now and it's been completely reliable. I have it linked for you in the description if you need one. You'll need a free McBoot card for your PlayStation 2 to get this set up. If you need one, I've got this one linked for you in the description below. And if you want to transfer art and cover files for your games over to your PlayStation 2, you'll need a USB drive formatted in FAT32 format. And this one's linked in the description if you need one. There are two key downloads you'll need to get in order to make this work. The first one is called WinHip. WinHip is used to format the hard drive for your PlayStation 2 and to transfer your games over to it. I've got it linked for you in the description below, download it from the PS2 home site here. And you'll also need the Open PS2 Loader or OPL Manager software. I've got this link for you in the description. Grab the download from this website right here. In your downloads folder you should have winhip.rar and you should have OPL Manager as zip. Winhip's an RAR file and you'll need software to extract that, but I have it in the description if you need it. Go ahead and extract the RAR file and then delete that RAR file once it's completed in order to eliminate confusion and clutter. Then with OPL, that one's a standard zip file and you can just extract that with the regular Windows extraction software. And once it's done, delete the zip file in order to eliminate clutter and confusion. Go ahead and connect your SATA hard drive to your computer either by using that SATA dock I showed you earlier or by ribbon connecting it to your computer. Then go into the WinHIP folder Go to the WinHIP executable and you have to run it as administrator. If you don't run it as administrator, it will not work correctly. And then when prompted, select yes. At this splash screen greeting menu, just come down to the OK button and click it. This is the WinHIP main interface. In order to get your hard drive formatted for use on a PlayStation 2, come up to select drive and click on it. In this case, I'm using a 500 gigabyte hard drive that's not configured yet so I can show you the entire process. You'll get an error message that it's not formatted for PlayStation 2 yet. We know that. Click on OK to move forward. Once you've selected the drive that you intend to use, go up to the Options button and then click on it. There's one setting in here that you need to pay special attention to, and that is if your drive is larger than 128 gigabytes to check 48-bit HD loader then click on OK. Now you're ready to format the drive. Come down to the Format button and click on it. From here there's one more setting that you want to check and that's to make sure that 48-bit HD loader is picked if you picked 48-bit HD loader, which you probably did. Once you've confirmed that you can come down to OK and click on it and you'll get several warnings that you're getting ready to format your drive and that it is irreversible. Click on Yes then when you're really, really sure you want to format, click on OK. The format process usually takes several minutes in real time, depending upon the size and speed of your drive. Once the process is complete and if everything went to plan, you'll get a confirmation message that your drive has been formatted and ready to go. Come down and click on OK to continue, and you'll get a splash screen that says that you'll probably get a software license agreement on the PlayStation 2 when you run it for the first time with the new hard drive installed. Just click OK to continue through it. 
Before you can start shuffling things around onto the PlayStation 2 drive you just formatted, OPL needs to set up a folder structure first on the hard drive. Here's what you do. Close out WinHIP, then go to your desktop. Now on your desktop or wherever you want on your computer really, you'll need to create a new folder. In that new folder, you want to name it OPL. What you'll do at this point is actually launch OPL for the first time so it can create a folder structure. Here's how it's done. Go back to the file explorer where you have your downloads and go back one level. That's going to be where you have the WinHIP and OPL folders, but this time go into the OPL folder. OPL has its own executable file. Select the executable file and launch it. I'd recommend running it as administrator as well. And then when prompted, select yes. If you're getting value from this video, make sure you subscribe while you're here. We have an incredible group of gamers here and you belong here with us. All right, let's get back to it. When you launch OPL for the first time, it's gonna tell you that there are no folders available. We're gonna correct that right now. Click on okay, and then click on no so you don't write folders to someplace that doesn't exist. It should pop up automatically, but if it doesn't, go up to settings, and then click on change mode, OPL folder. You'll get a pop-up window that will allow you to establish where your OPL folder is located. We put it right on the desktop, so it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. Click on Browse, and you'll get the standard pop-up window that lets you pick locations in Windows. You can just scroll down to the bottom of this, and you'll find the OPL folder right there. Click on it, and then click on OK. Then come over to the left and click on the Save button to save that path setting change. All right, now that the path is set, you can create the folders necessary for OPL. Come over to the OK button and click on it. And at the pop-up message this time, click on yes. It's going to create folders inside the OPL folder that you put on the desktop. You're gonna need these folders in just a moment. That's everything that you need to do with OPL at the moment. You can go ahead and close out OPL and go back to your Windows desktop. Let's just take a moment and make sure that OPL did its job. Go ahead and minimize File Explorer for the moment and go over to your OPL folder you created and click into it. You should see a new series of folders here. The one that you're going to copy your game ISOs over to is called DVD. Let's go ahead and do that now. I keep some ISOs on this computer just for doing demonstrations and for example, this one has Tekken4.iso available for it. Right click on your ISO that you want to transfer into this folder and copy it. Once you have the ISO or ISO game files copied, navigate back to the OPL folder and then into the DVD folder and then paste them in the DVD folder. Adding art to the games is optional, but it does add value to the process once you get everything set up and going. If you want to add art, go back to the downloads folder or wherever you downloaded and copied over OPL and go back into OPL folder. And once again, locate the OPL EXE file and then right click and run it as administrator. And when prompted by Windows, come down and select yes. You are almost certain to get a pop-up message that says that you have bad ISO names and it's gonna show you the bad ISO tab. This is because looking up artwork in the database requires that the game be named in a very specific format. Let's go ahead and correct that. Move your pointer over to the OK button and click on it. OPL makes it possible to get the proper database names for these games online. To get the database name for a game, click on the game to highlight it. Then navigate to the pane on the right side and click Try Update File Name. This will access OPL's online database to try to get you the proper database name for your game. And in this case, it did. To change the game name, click on Yes. Now OPL can download, or what's called scrape, the art for your game. Go up to Batch and click on it and then come down to Art Download and click. You're not gonna see any art files here yet because they haven't been downloaded yet. Let me show you how that's done. In the pane on the right, check the boxes for any artwork that you're interested in downloading for the games that you have installed. In this example, I checked them all so we can get everything. Then click on the Start button to let it rip. Once the process is completed, you'll get a pop-up message that the operation was successful and you'll see the artwork for the game that you downloaded. You can also do this process in batch so that you don't have to go back and do each game one at a time. Click OK to close the pop-up message and you're done with OPL. You can click the right X button in the top right corner and close out OPL to go back to your desktop. 
If you haven't yet, go ahead and put that FAT32 formatted USB drive into your computer because you're going to need it for copying art. Go into the OPL folder and you'll see an art folder here which is now populated with the art that you downloaded. All of the art files get thrown into this one folder, so if you have multiple games, you'll have multiple games worth of art in the same folder. You'll need to grab this folder, so right click it and pick copy. Then you'll need to navigate to this PC and go to the USB drive that you've plugged in. In this case, it's drive F. Double click into the drive and then paste the art folder right on the root of the drive. Okay, the art's ready to go. Let's go ahead and copy those ISO files that you put in the OPL folder on your desktop over to your PlayStation 2 hard drive. Go back to your downloads folder or wherever you copied WinHip and go back into the WinHip folder then find WinHip, and remember you have to launch this one as administrator. So right click and pick run as administrator. And at the prompt, select yes. Remember that WinHip needs to know which drive to copy files over to. Come up to select drive and click on it, and then select the appropriate drive to copy your content over to. Come down with the pointer to add images and click. This doesn't mean images as an art file, it means images as in disk images. Then come down to Image File or Files and click to select it. Navigate over to the button that says Add Images and click on it. At your desktop, go over to the OPL folder that you created and double click into it. And then inside that folder, go into DVD and double click into it. Then click on and select any of the ISOs you want to copy over to your hard drive and pick Open. You'll see a list of any ISO files that you selected queued up and ready to go. To begin the process of copying over the games to your hard drive, navigate up to the Start button and click on it. You can optionally change the name of the game in the menu as it will appear on your hard drive in it OPL, and then click on OK to start the process. Just be aware that in real time it can take quite a long time to copy these files over to the hard drive. You'll get a confirmation message that everything copied over successfully. Navigate over to the OK button and click on it to close the pop-up message. At this point, you're done with your PC. You can close out WinHip and you can also safely eject the USB drive with your art files and safely power down the SATA drive you're going to put in your PS2. In fact, let's take a moment to cover that process right now so you can see how it's done. The Fat PS2 model has a door for the expansion bay on the back. You'll need to remove this door in order to be able to put the hard drive in. All you really have to do is just push down on this tab and then lift it right out. But you might want to keep that door because it is still a part of your original PlayStation 2. Next up, grab the SATA hard drive and the SATA adapter for the PlayStation 2. The SATA port needs to go into the bottom port on the SATA adapter for the PlayStation 2. You can just push it in and they'll fit right together. But one problem here, it actually is kind of wiggly and loose. And if you put this into the PlayStation 2 as is and just set it in here, you're going to end up with this. To eliminate this problem, you can cut a piece of cardboard just smaller than the hard drive itself and put it underneath the hard drive when you put it in. What this does is it creates a buffer between the hard drive and the case so that the hard drive won't shimmy inside the unit. And it's also non-conductive, which means you're not touching metal to metal, so it's a safe deal. Now you can gently tighten down those two outer screws, either with a flathead screwdriver or with a small coin. And this will secure the adapter to the PlayStation 2 so it doesn't come out. Once it's secured in place, you can go ahead and plug in the PlayStation 2, plug in the video, put the Freemic boot memory card into slot number 2, and the USB drive into slot number 1. Then plug in a controller and power on the PS2. With the memory card in slot number 2, you'll be able to launch Freemic boot onto your PlayStation 2. When the menu system comes up, you'll see a variety of different choices here. The first thing you need to do is go down to OPL or Open PS2 Loader and select it so that it can set up a partition on your hard drive. Scroll down with the D-pad, select it with X. When you go into OPL for the first time, all you have to do is take that yellow highlight and scroll down with the D-pad until you get to Exit and then select Exit with the X button. This sets up a partition on your hard drive, which we'll need to get to in just a moment. Select Exit and then select Exit to Browser. When the browser comes back up, use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to Launch Elf or W Launch Elf. Then select it with the X button. Launch Elf tends to be kind of smallish and low contrast, so I'm going to zoom in here to make this easier to read. 
I've also done as much color grading and sharpening as I could reasonably do. Press the circle button to go to the file browser and take note that circle is now moving you forward and triangle moving you back. What you see here are a list of drives that are available to you on your PlayStation 2 with the selected drive highlighted in red. Use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to the one that says Mass. That's USB Mass Storage. Then select it with the circle button. Remember that art folder you copied over to your USB drive? Here it is. Use the D-pad to scroll down with the red highlight until you get to the art folder. Then press the right one. It's the right shoulder button, not right trigger button. On the right side of the screen, you'll get a menu that will pop up with additional menu choices. Copy will already be selected with an arrow. Just press the circle button to copy the art folder. On the left side of the screen, press the triangle button to go back one level in the directory until you get back to the list of drives. From here, press the D-pad up twice to get to HDD0. That's gonna be hard disk drive zero, which is the hard drive you just installed in your PlayStation 2. Then press circle to select it. In the list of choices here, all the way at the bottom, you'll see plus OPL. That's a partition that OPL created when you launched it just a moment ago. That's why you had to launch it before you went into launch elf. Now select OPL with the circle button to go into that partition. And you'll see a list of folders here. Press the right one or right shoulder button to pull up that advanced menu. Then scroll down to paste and select it with the circle button. And if prompted, just add those art files to your existing art folder. At this point, you're done with Launch Elf. But to get back to the PlayStation 2 free McBoot menu, you need to power off and repower on your console. When the free McBoot main menu comes back up, this time scroll back down to get to OPL or open PlayStation 2 Loader and select it with the X button to launch it. This time, press the X button to go into the settings. You'll need to change a very specific setting in here in order to be able to access the games on your hard drive. From the settings menu, continue to scroll down with the D-pad until you get to HDD device start mode. Press the X button and then change this from off to auto. Then press the X button to confirm the selection. And once you've confirmed your selection, scroll down to OK with the D-pad and select it with the X button. Although optional, I would definitely recommend you go to Display Settings and select it with the X button. Because here's the deal, if you don't, all of those art files you grabbed will not display. Use the D-pad to scroll down and make sure these three things are all turned on. I would recommend that you turn on Enable Automatic Sorting because that's going to sort your games into alphabetical order, which is going to make a lot better sense than just a random list of games. If you turn on Enable Automatic Refresh, it will refresh new games when you add them to your hard drive through that process we discussed earlier. And finally, I would recommend you scroll down and turn on Enable Cover Art, because if you don't, you won't be able to see all that great artwork you went to the extra effort to download earlier. At this point, you're pretty much done with things you would likely want to change on display. Scroll down to OK with the D-pad and select it with the X button. One more thing here that's really important. If you don't come down and save your changes, the next time you come into OPL, they will revert back to the defaults. Be sure to use the D-pad to scroll down with the yellow highlight to save changes and select it with the X button to save the changes you've made to your settings. Press the circle button to access the games on your hard drive and voila! The artwork will display, your games will be listed here, and you can use the D-pad to select the game you want and launch it with the X button. For even more great video game content, check out this video here. It's shown on screen in the desktop browser experience, and it's also linked in the pinned comment and description below. Thanks so much. I always enjoy our time together here on YouTube, and I can't wait to see you there in the next video.